8.15, I'm sorry, church van leaving at 8.15, so be here at 8.15 or before, and Daniel could tell more about that as we go along. That's a special paintball, not just for young people, it's for adults too that would like to go and do that, it's going to be a chess week. Brother Daniel actually will be the guest speaker that day, it should be a really special time. Brother Mark Taylor over at Good News Baptist and the folks over there and others are going to be involved with that. Oh, let's see, I think that's about it for the moment. This morning, I need, guys, I need you to shut the doors for me. I got a special vote we need to do. We don't normally vote on a Sunday morning, okay? I'm going to call a family business meeting here, okay? Just recently, Mrs. Rose Hall, who's uh, just stepped down from doing the bookkeeping, she's been a secretary here, she's taught in the Christian school that Central had, she's been here over 52 years. She came to the Bible college that Central had many years ago. Um, through time, Pastor Hall, then, they were not married, of course, she, he led her to the Lord. As it went on, then he married her, and she has been here ser faithfully serving many years. Of course, Pastor Hall is in heaven now. So what we'd like to do uh, is to try to do something really special to honor her, okay? We're asking the church, I need a, a motion to... Uh, take $2,500 from the general fund, and we have the funds to do that. Um, and we would like to do that to give to her in honor of her 50-some years here at Central Baptist Church. This lady has given her life here. I got a motion by Rick, a second by Jimmy. All, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed, see me later, okay? <laughs> Did that only because she is in the back serving as she always does. Always does, faithfully serving. She's doing the little kids' class in the back during junior church. So, thank you, church. Today, well, a little bit of a sad note, definitely. Eric and Lauren will be heading out uh, this week. Uh, they need help with uh, loading on Thursday. Is that right, Eric? And on Friday, they'll be going out towards uh, heading to South Carolina. So, we're going to miss them and a little Elena. So, today, as you're going out underneath the carport, we're going to we'll have Eric and Lauren, and if you'll get her and Elena here, well, we'll do have prayer for you guys, and as we go, we let them go first, and we got a ton of Krispy Kreme donuts, okay? All right, so we're going to have fellowship time under the carport. It's a beautiful day, okay? And got some, uh, I think we got some decanter drinks filled up, things so we can have and just fellowship with them as they are heading out this week, okay? All right, I think I'm announced out. Here we go.
good morning. Oh, that was terrible. Let's try it again. Good morning. Hey, that's pretty good. Go ahead and stand up together. We're going to sing a song this morning. The title is Jesus Never Fails. Let's see if it's going to work on the screens. This coming up. They're getting it real quick. I tell you, we had a terrific weekend this past weekend. God bless immensely. Uh, I have Dr. Shetler with us. And I tell you, it's great to be saved. Are you glad to be saved this morning? That did not sound very convincing. Let's try it again. Are you glad to be saved today? Amen. That's pretty good. Wonderful. He's got the words up there now. Let's sing this chorus. Jesus never fails. Ready? Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. You might as well get there behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail. Because Jesus never fails. Amy, let's try it one more time. Let's see if we can sing a little bit louder. And do me a favor, we're going to have to do this, all right? Point out at me. Everyone take two fingers, point out at me. Not everyone's doing it. Ever take two fingers, point out at me. Okay, now point them back at yourself. Bring a little closer. A little closer to the corners of your mouth. And on a count of three, do a push up. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. You can smile a little bit. You're serving Jesus. Right here we go. Jesus never fails, Jesus never fails, you might as well get there behind me, Satan, you cannot prevail, because Jesus never fails. Wonderful scene, go and turn around, shake someone's hand, welcome them to a Sunday morning church. All right, as you're heading back to your seats, let's go ahead and sing that chorus again. Remain standing, everyone stand up together. 
Let's sing that chorus about two more times through. Jesus never fails. Ready? Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. You might as well get there behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus. One more time. Ready? Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. You might as well get there behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. Wonderful singing. You may be seated this morning. I'll ask our guys to come for the morning offering today. Amen. You'll look on the bulletin there tonight, of course, at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock choir practice, 6 o'clock service. Doing a Bible trivia that we're doing and have some answers on the maze on the back. Please don't do it during service, okay? Wait till this afternoon. You'll have some fun with it then. Uh, we'll do that tonight in the service. And we got something, of course, the preaching and the singing tonight. Uh, I think that's about it. Okay. All right. Appreciate your faithfulness and your giving. Guys, once we do this, at the end of the service, we are going to take a special love offering for our preacher today. Okay? All right. Jimmy? Father in heaven, as we come to you in prayer, Father God, <clears throat> with something new on our hearts, not to be hazy, crazy, or lazy, Father God, when we pray. Father, we look to you for everything, Father, and we pray, Father, that as, as we collect this offering, Lord, that it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Lord God, and that is our priority. That's our mandate, is to, Lord God, to reach this lost and dying world with your word and your mission, and Lord, we just thank you for all you do, and we thank you for uh, Brother uh, Jimmy if I say it right, Shetler, Lord God, I pray you just bless. Don't, God, you, <laughs> you have your way in our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead and take your hymnals with me. Turn to number 315. Let's stand up together. Number 315, burdens are lifted at Calvary. We're going to try all three verses together. Days are filled. Let's try this first. Ready? Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and dream. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted. Good, there you go. Sing it out now. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. 
Jesus is very near. Everything you have on this last verse, can I'm going to ask our quartet to make their way over to prepare to sing. Ready? Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Wonderful singing. You may be seated. We're going to sing a song this morning that is entitled The Sweetest Song I Know. This is a sad day, bittersweet moment. We have Miss Lauren and Mr. Eric heading out soon, and so she wanted to do this as her last special um, with the group to, today for church. Them sing, he paid the price, and Jesus bore it all. I've heard them sing, I'm coming home, and hear the master's call. I've heard them sing the modern songs and songs of long ago. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound is the sweetest song I know. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Oh, how sweet is the sound. No sweeter song could ever be found. I've heard of the sound. Plunged our washed as white, white as snow. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Is the sweetest song I know. It was the song my mother sang in sweet and humble voice. Like music from the world above, it made my soul rejoice. Its soothing words and melody like rippling waters flow. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound is the sweetest song I know. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Oh, how sweet is the sound. No sweeter song, no sweeter song could in this life be found. Be found. I've heard a thunder of sounds, tongues are washed as white with blood as snow. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound is the sweetest song I know. Yes, amazing grace, how sweet the sound is the sweetest song. I know. Amen. All right, Dr. Shetler, it's all yours. Good. Amen. I'd like to hear them sing another one. Amen. Amen. That was good. Pastor Charles, thank you so much for allowing me to be in your church and behind your pulpit today. And I do count that a real honor. I really do. And I am so thankful. There is a great spirit here at Central. And I've already experienced that. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to Philippians chapter 3. If you were here for the Sunday school hour, I mentioned to you that I have three sons, Ben, Luke, and Drew. They're all somewhat in the ministry. Uh, today, I have a Christian filmmaker, an apologist, and somebody who delivers books for Rebecca Books. So, uh, all three of my boys are uh, hungry for God and serving the Lord. Now... We lived in Pensacola, Florida for 31 years. We lived in the same house for over 13 years. And when we left to go to California, obviously we had to get rid of a lot of things. And of course you had to pack up stuff and get rid of stuff. We had a lot of garage sales and yard sales or whatever. But there was one thing I said, man, I don't know how I'm taking this, but I'm taking this. Between our kitchen and the laundry room, there is a door and on that door jam, there were marks. And those marks meant a lot to me. And those marks meant a lot to my boys. Because throughout their years of growing up in that home, every once in a while they'd say, Dad, can we go over to the door jam and check? And I said, okay, let's go. And they'd come over and they would stand as straight as they could. Sometimes they would cheat and step on their toes. 
But they would stand as straight as they could and we would measure them and we'd put a little mark. We'd put down their name, Drew, Ben, Luke, and we put down the date. Well, now we're leaving. And I said, man, Mary Lee, how are we going to take that door jam out to California? She said, Jim, that ain't happening. So I went to Home Depot and I got a little uh, one by four. And uh, I took that one by four and I put it up against that door jam and I marked every mark on that one by four. And I put down their name, the date, and everything. And I got to tell you, this is really cool. So it is just this past week that the first mark, Drew's my youngest, Drew has a two-year-old. And I have a two-year-old mark at Drew. So now we're comparing the two as they are growing. I have three grandsons, and we're comparing them to my, my boys and, and, their, and how tall they were at that age or whatever. And I will tell you something. It was something my boys loved to do. They wanted to, as a matter of fact, a lot of them, when they, were, when they were little, when Drew was little, you know, the next day, Dad, can we do it again? No, I don't think anything happened, okay? You gotta, you gotta, we gotta wait at least a month, okay? You know, but they wanted badly to see signs of what? Growth. Now, I want to tell you something about all humans. There is something in us. I don't care if you saved or lost. It doesn't matter. God put in us a desire to grow, to mature. I have been working with young people for 43 years. I, I know that there's tons, but I don't know of anyone that preaches to more teenagers in a year than I do. Usually, the average year, I'll speak to between 10 and 15,000 teenagers every year that I preach to. And if there is one thing about teenagers, they are never the right age. So they say, if they're 12, they want to be 15. If they're 15, they want to be 18. And it just goes all the way. Because they want to grow and mature. And it's just part of anything. If you start a church, you don't start a church and go like, well, I hope next year we don't have as many as we do this year. No, everything is about growth. You want to mature. God put that in us that we would grow and mature. And that's true in our Christian experience as well. So I'll tell you at Central Baptist what I want to preach today. I've never preached this outline before, so bear with me, okay? But I thought about, uh, Carrie was telling me some things about the church and how it's been growing and that there's a lot of new believers and just different things going on. And by the way, it doesn't matter what, how long we've been saved. We still want to mature, don't we? We still want to grow. So I've entitled this message, The Marks of a Mature Mind. The Marks of a Mature Mind. Now, our text is found in Philippians chapter 3, and I'm going to go ahead and begin reading in verse number 10. And this is just, I, I don't know, there's so many passages in Philippians that I love, but there's just something. I just kind of, uh, I, I wonder sometimes if, if, if Paul could give one verse that was his life verse, I wonder if he wouldn't give it at Philippians 3.10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I just think that was Paul's passion, that I may know him, Jesus Christ, uh, and the power of his resurrection, and even the fellowship of his sufferings. Look at verse 11. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, now listen to these next four verses. Not as though I had already attained. Uh uh. Uh uh. Either we're already, everyone together, what's the next word? Already. Okay, now everyone's got to know what that word means because that's going to be the key word today. That word perfect means mature. That's exactly what it means. Let me tell you about that word because you know about this word. When Jesus Christ was on the cross and just before he died, he cried out something. You remember, we're getting close to Easter. You remember when he cried out? It is finished. Look that word up. Finished. You know what that word is? Teleestai. That word means perfect, mature. You don't add anything else to it. It is mature. It is 
perfect. That is the same word that's used here, teleastai. It is the word that deals with growth, maturity, perfection, where you're supposed to be. Now look at what he says. Not as though I, not as though I had already attained, either were already mature, perfect, I haven't arrived, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count out myself to have apprehended. I don't believe I'm perfect yet. I don't believe I'm mature. There's still room for growth. By the way, how many can agree with that? How many can agree with that? There's still room for growth in your life? Brethren, I count out myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth onto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look at the next verse. Let us therefore, Central Baptist Church, let us therefore, believer, let us therefore as many as be, everyone together, what's the next word? Perfect. Mature. Telestai. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus, everyone together, what's the next word? Minded. So I want to preach to you today the marks of a mature mind. These, I don't think this is inclusive, but I do believe a mind that is mature and a mind that is growing will say these three statements. And we're going to look at these three. We've got to have the Lord help us because it is not going to be energy or illustration or excitement. It has got to be the Spirit of God. But I am praying that everyone, it doesn't matter if we, all right, so let's just ask. How many of you in this room have been saved for um, more than uh, 30 years? More, you've been saved more than 30 years. Raise your hand. Whoa. How many of you have been saved um, for more than 25 years? Raise your hand. Okay. If you just raised your hand, you would still have it up. Okay. You, over 20 years. All right. How many of you in this room have been saved for more than 10 years? Raise your hand. 10 years. That should be the majority, and it is. How many of you have been saved less than five years? Less than five years. Okay? Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Amen. Very good. Very good. All right. Now listen. It doesn't matter how many years we've been saved. Every one of us is still growing. Amen? We're all still growing. We're still all maturing. If you've been saved for less than five years, these three statements are for you. If you've been saved for more than 30 years, these three statements I'm going to give today are for you. And we find all three of them in this passage of Scripture. Now, I'm going to tell you, the only way we're going to mature, we're not going to, be, we're not going to mature by our effort. We're going to mature by the Spirit of God. So what we have to do is allow God to speak to our hearts today about marks of a mature mind. Because i got to tell you, there's a lot of childish behavior in the church today. There's a lot of baby carnal Christians in the church, and it's time for us to grow up. I believe, what's the date today? March what? 26. I believe March 26, 2023 at Central Baptist Church, you could put a mark and say that was the day that my mind started to mature greater. I've, I've had maturity. I, I've been saved for 25 years. But on that day, March 26th, there was another mark made that I grew a little bit more in a mature mind. And every one of us, doesn't matter how long we've been saved, could make that mark today. I think these three statements will give you a mature, a perfect uh, completed mind. So let's go to the Lord. We need his help. Father, I cannot make this happen today, but I am passionate that it happens today. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will take what, has, <clears throat> that what will be given and that, Lord, I believe it's founded in, this, in these five, six verses. I believe that everything I'm going to teach comes from your word. So I'm expecting that you will use your word in the hearts of people at Central Baptist. Now, Father, I do not know 
who is in this room. And there may be people that need to begin their relationship and growth with you. They cannot grow because they do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And I pray, Father, if there is one that is lost, that would not know for sure where they would spend eternity, and has never, oh, they've believed in Jesus, and they've got, <coughs> excuse me, Father, they, they've got, they know the Bible, and they believe in the Bible in church, and that's why they're even here today. But, Father, they're not saved. They've never trusted you. They got to be born again. Birth starts the process of growth. And there may be some in this room that have been born physically, but have never been born spiritually. I pray that their growth process, their born again, would happen today. That they would be born from above. But for the rest of us, Lord, wherever we are on this journey, we need to mature. We need to grow up. We need to take these three statements and Lord, let them be the guide and filter of our life. And Lord, I pray for Jim Shetler. I pray for Pastor Charles. I pray for the members of this church that today they would take steps to mature in their walk with you. I ask these things. I cannot make it happen. So I ask these things in the name of the one who can do it. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ and for his sake that you would help us all take our next step of maturity in our mind. We pray this now in Jesus' name and God's children said, Amen. Amen. Number one, number one, I have not arrived. I think a mature mind is a mind that says, I have not arrived. I haven't attained to everything. Notice what he says in verse 12 to prove that maturity in his mind. Not as though I had already attained. Either we're already perfect. I, I'm not mature yet. This is the Apostle Paul, folks. And if the Apostle Paul says he hasn't attained, can I tell you something? You haven't either. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. Hey, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I am not satisfied with where I am spiritually. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Okay, so the first statement that has to be said is you have to say, I have not arrived. There is still much to be attained in my life. In order for that to occur, you have to have three characteristics in this mind. Number one, you got to get honest. You got to be honest about yourself. You know what? Honestly, I'm not the husband I should be. Well, good. It's finally, you admit it. You know what? Honestly, I'm not the mother that I should be. Well, good. That's a great step, mom. Now you're, you're heading, you know what, honestly, I'm not the Christian young person that I should be. Well, good. You have to get honest, first of all. Secondly, you got to get humble. you got to humble yourself and say, God, I need your help. I can't make this happen. And third, you got to have hope. you got to believe, God, I know I'm not what I'm supposed to be, but I'm on a journey. And God, I know you want me to move to the next step. So here's what I want you to do. I want everyone to hold your spot right here in Philippians because we're obviously coming back. But quickly, take your Bibles and turn to Joshua chapter 11. Joshua chapter 11. Now you're going to love this. I'm going to mess with your mind here a little bit. And in order to do that, I'm going to need your help. Joshua chapter 11. Joshua chapter 11. So I teach the book of Joshua at college, and I love it. I think it's made for young people. The victorious Christian life is what I theme the book. And everything that Israel did in taking the promised land is the way that we should live our victorious Christian life. So we come to Joshua chapter 11, and we come to verse 23, the very last verse in Joshua 11. You all there? Everyone there? Joshua chapter 11, the very last verse of chapter 11. Here we go. I'm going to need your help. So Joshua took the, everyone together, what did Joshua take? Okay, that was terrible, Central Baptist. Everyone together. Joshua took the what? Look at the person next to you and say, whole land. 
Joshua took how much of the land, everyone? Okay, does everyone understand that? Joshua took what? Brother Shuttle, don't treat us like kindergartners. Okay, well, this is going to get really interesting in a moment, okay? So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes and the land rested from war. Everyone together, everyone together. How much of the land did Joshua take? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Look at chapter 13. Look at chapter 13. Look at verse number one. Are you ready? Here we go. I love this. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Hey, Josh, you're old and stricken in years. It's like, you know, Lord, you don't have to tell me. I know this already. But then I want you to see this. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Well, Brother Shuttle, this is very interesting. I have finally found the first contradiction in the Bible. Are there contradictions in the Bible? Well, we got a problem. Because you guys just said in Joshua chapter 11, 23, how much of the land did they take? Chapter 13, verse 1 says, what? There is still what? Much land to be possessed. You got a problem with that? I got a problem with that. That doesn't make any sense. Did they have the whole land or didn't they have the whole land? And the answer is yes. Yes what? So here is one of the most important spiritual truths you'll ever hear. There is a difference between our position in Christ and our practice with Christ. Now let me explain what that means. When you got saved, you got it all. You got all of it. However, we spend the rest of our life practicing what we are. On August 16th, 1980, I became a husband. On August 15th, 1980, I was not a husband. On August 16th, 1980, I became a husband. Was I part a husband or was I completely a husband? I was completely a husband. Now my wife would say, no, he wasn't. <laughs> I'm telling you, he had so much to learn, it was unbelievable, and I did. And I didn't know what I was doing as a husband. I had no example from my father. I didn't know what I was, I don't know, what does a husband do? I know I'm 100% husband, but I ain't got a clue what I'm doing. Now let me tell you something. The moment you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you got all of the Holy Spirit. You didn't get part of them, you got all of them. You possess the whole land. You got it all. However, we spend the rest of our life taking and practicing out what we already are in Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? So what happens is, in my life, my position is I'm a child of God. I can't become more of a child of God. I can't be loved more by God. I can't get more power from God. But what I can do is I can experience what I have, I can experience it more day by day as I mature. Now listen, when Paul said, I have not arrived, he was being extremely honest right there. He was saying, hey, there's there, I still struggle with my anger. There's things in my thought life I shouldn't have. There's stuff going on. There's a way I relate with people sometimes. I get upset with them. And I, I have not matured completely yet. I don't have a, a, a complete perfect mind yet. I am still now. I know in Christ that my mind is his. And I know my position in Christ. But I got to practice every day. I have not arrived. You got to get honest. What areas in your life can you look over and go, you know, I still struggle with gossip. 
there's things I hear at church and I go ahead and spread it and I probably shouldn't. Good. At least you're being honest. You will never mature in your Christian life until you get honest. Some of us come to church every week and we're playing a game. We are not getting real. And, and, and we, we're not being honest. you got to say, God, there's things in my life that I still need. And Pastor Charles, I'm expecting you today to nail it. I'm expecting to get in God's word today in my devotions. And God, show me what needs to change. I know I'm all of a child of God. I know that in Christ I have everything that I need. But there's areas in my life that I have not attained. you got to get honest. Now I'm going to tell you a story. If you ever hear me preach, you will find out that Jim Shetler does not tell jokes. I just, I just flop with jokes, Pastor. I'm not a joke teller at all. But I have one joke. I got one joke. And you today are blessed. You get to hear my one joke. Okay, this is all I got. I do not tell canned jokes. And if you've ever heard me preach, you go, you oh, know, that's true. Brother Shetler never tells a canned joke. I don't, but I got one joke, and here it is. There was a circus and the circus wasn't doing good. And the manager of the circus called in one of his clowns and said, hey, I just got to tell you, you've seen, the, you've seen the crowd. The crowd ain't doing well. I know. I, I've been very concerned about this. Yeah, well, let me tell you something, clown. Here's your pink slip. You're fired. Oh, you just can't. We just can't. No, no, I, no, no, no. I got, I got a wife and kids. I, you got you to gotta keep me employed. I, I got to keep being a clown. Hey, listen, I'll tell you what. We do not need more clowns. And, and, and you're going to have to go. I, I just don't need any more. And I can't hold on to you. Financially, we can't do it. No, no, no. I got to have this job. I'm sorry. I, 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 we just, there, there's certain areas we're cutting, and one of them is clowns. And, and I, just, I just can't use you anymore. No, you got to give me another shot. I, I can help you. I can help you. Well, the manager feel bad for the guy. And he says, well, let me think. He looks over in the corner and there's this gorilla outfit. And he says, well, we had to get rid of our gorilla this week, too, because we can't feed him. It's co- co- cost too much. Let me ask you something. We got that gorilla outfit. Do you think you can act like a real gorilla? Oh, I can be like the best gorilla in the world. I can be like the best gorilla you've ever heard and seen in your life. I can do it. I can do it. He said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll give you it tonight. I'll give you a shot at it. You do a good job at being a gorilla, and you're real, and they believe you're real then you got a job. He says, man, I'll be the best gorilla ever. So that night, that clown gets in that gorilla outfit, and I'm telling you what, he is the gorilla of gorillas. He makes King Kong look like a little monkey. I mean, he is just unbelievable. I mean, he does all this gorillas, and those people go wild. They go, man, and boy, they start telling their friends, you got to go to the circus. you got to see this gorilla. And I'm telling you, the crowds start getting bigger and bigger. And there's people coming, and the crowds are filling up, and this guy's doing the job as the gorilla. And one night in his gorilla thing, he just goes all the way, and he goes up the ladder in his gorilla outfit. And he gets up on that ladder in that gorilla outfit, and he starts walking across the trapeze. He starts walking on the tightrope. He's walking. Across, and the people are going crazy. They think he's a real gorilla. And they're going like, wow, that is the most anomaly. They trained the gorilla to walk on a tightrope. And people are yelling and screaming. And he falls. And he falls right into the lion's den. And the lions start roaring. And they're going to eat him up. And the guy freaks out. He starts taking his, his, his costume off, and he says, help, help, somebody help me. And one of the lions says, shut up, or we're going to all lose our job. <laughs> you didn't think that was very funny, did you? Well, let me tell you something. A lot of us come to church with costumes on, and we all look really good at Central Baptist. And we're here, and we got our little place that we always sit, and we all come to church, and we're all real. You know what? It's time for some of you to start taking your costumes off. And it's time for some of you to start getting honest with God. And you know what? We play games in church. Oh, we love the Bible, and we love this and everything, but we're not getting honest. You know what Paul said? He said, I want you, this is the Apostle Paul. I want you to know, I have not attained. I have not apprehended. Hey, guys, I know I'm the Apostle Paul but I am not everything that I ought to be. 
There are areas in my life that need to mature. And I want to tell you right now, the mature mind is honest enough to say, I'm not where I need to be. There are things in my, I am not satisfied with the Christian that I am. Guys, I have been saved for over 50 years. And I say this not because it fits really nice now. Gang, I'm telling you right now, I am not the man of God that I ought to be. And I'm being very honest. There are areas in my life that I still struggle with after 50 years of being a child of God. I am not satisfied with where I am in my spiritual life. How about you? I'll tell you, until you can, you can say in your life, I have not arrived. And then after you get honest, then you get humble. And you say, God, I need your help. God, I have struggled with this anger. Lord, I have struggled with this worry. God, I have struggled with this unbelief. I've been child of God for 20, 30 years, and I'm still struggling with this lust. I'm still struggling with this area in my life. God, I need your help. That is a mature mind that gets honest, that gets humble, but he's also hopeful. He's also believing, I'm going to keep pressing toward the mark. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up because I think God has got to, I got the whole land, but I also know that God is going to help me continue to possess the land. Number one, a mature mind says, I have not arrived. So let's go mature minds. Let's say Mark number one says what? Okay, that was, yeah, yeah, you guys have not arrived. <laughs> With response. Okay, so let's try that again. Marks of a mature mind. Number one. I have not arrived. Good. Number two. I will not look back. I will not look back. Now, this is a mark of a mature mind. Everyone, back to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Look what he says. Brethren, I count on myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I will not look back. I'm going to tell you, some of you guys, all you do is talk about the good old days. By the way, they weren't as good as you thought they were, by the way. We don't remember the past right. Let me just tell you this. You know what it says in Luke chapter 9, verse 62? No man taking his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. If you're living in the past of whatever's happened in your life, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. Any man taking his hand to the plow, Luke 9, 62, and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You know what Paul was able to do in a mature mind? Number one, he says, I have not arrived. But number two, he says, I will not look back back we were uh we lived in pensacola florida for 31 years i came down as a college student i graduated i uh was a college representative for two years i was a youth pastor for seven years i was a senior pastor for 18 for 31 years we lived there and when god was moving our hearts to move on and boy that was a big deal God really stirred our hearts that we needed to take a step of faith and go without knowing. I'll tell you what we wanted to do. After 31 years, we wanted to look back. We wanted to live in the past. And God says, no, 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 no. It's time to go forward. I don't know how long you've been at Central Baptist. doesn't matter. Now is not the time to look back at Central Baptist. Now is the time to look forward. Now is the time to believe what God has for you. I don't care how long you've been married. You ought to be looking forward. I, I was talking about the book that we have over here, the fourth quarter. I don't care what's happened in the first three quarters of your life. You're in the fourth quarter right now, senior saints. Are you going to make it? By the way, no matter how you've lived your life for three quarters, I've lived, you know, I've really lived for God and God's really honored. Well, you could lose the whole game in the fourth quarter, let me tell you. It's, a, it's not necessarily how you began, it's how you're going to finish. And you've got to, you, I will not look back. You don't live there anymore. And there's things that have happened in your life that some of you have never been able to move on from. You can't go forward and backward at the same time. By the way, that is, by the way how profound is that? Okay? 
You say, Brother Schiller, are we about to learn something? Oh, we're going to learn a great truth here. Did you know that you cannot go forward and backward at the same time? Every one of you in this room is either going forward or you're going backward in your spiritual journey. You cannot go forward and backward. And what did he say? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth onto those things which are before. Now I'm going to say a statement and I hope some of you young ones and I say young ones, I'm talking 20, 30s, 40s. I hope that you chew on this all week long. I really do. But at 65 years of age, I'm going to share this. I really believe this is true. The older I get, the more I believe this. Life is not about what you remember. Life is about what you decide to forget. And I'll tell you, you're not going to make it through life on memories. You're going to make it through life on what you decide to forget. Hey, people have hurt me. People have said things about me. People have done things to me that aren't right. If I'm going to live my life with what I have failed or what other people have failed me in, I'll never do anything for God. you got to move forward. You cannot live in the past. And you got to come uh, forgetting those things which are behind. I'm letting it go. Brother Shetler, when it says forget, what, how do you forget something as terrible as this? How do you ever forget about the person that you loved who's gone now? How, how do you forget that? Okay, so let me explain what that means. First of all, if somebody's done something to you, what does it mean to forget? It doesn't mean that you'll ever forget what they did or what they said. I mean, it was a life-changing moment. But here's what it means. You're no longer the judge. You've given it over to God. You're no longer the witness. You're no longer the prosecuting attorney. You're no longer the judge. You have taken the court case. You have forgiven that person. And you say, God, you do whatever you want with them. But I'm no longer their judge. Some of you need to do that. Some of you have been done wrong to by people in the world, people in your family, people at work, people in other churches, maybe people here, maybe people that live with you. Your spouse has hurt you. Your spouse has done things to you. What do you do with that? I hold it over them every day. Yeah. Well, what kind of marriage is that? you got to be able to move on. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth onto those things which are before. Let me tell you what a mature mind does. A mature mind says, I have not arrived. A mature mind says, you know what? I will not look back. I am going forward in my Christian life. Lord, I have failures. I have disappointments. Nobody has disappointed me more than me. And I have things in my life, but you know what? I'm not going to live there. Forgetting those things which are behind, I'm going to reach forth onto those things which are before. I have not arrived, and I will not look back. Last one, and we're done. You want a mature mind? Here's how you get it. I should not aim low. I should not aim low. Let me tell you something about a mature mind. A mature mind does not aim low of what God can do in their life. A mature mind will aim high. Look at me, if you would, at verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so I'll tell you what he does. I have not arrived, I want you to know, and I am not looking back. And I got to tell you something else. I am not going to aim low. I'm going to believe that my God, I expect my God to do something with my life. I believe that God wants to do something in and through and my walk with him and, and being able to serve others as well. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I wrote this down this morning. Let me, let me encourage you with this. Live for the, an eternal purpose, not a temporal pleasure. Live for an eternal purpose purpose. Go for the high calling. You were made for more. This world, 
We get caught up in the world and all the things of the world and it's all temporal pleasures and all of this and we never go anywhere. We stay as little babes because we don't have an eternal purpose going in our life. We have temporal pleasure. Expect God will use you. Believe the Lord has more for you than what you have for yourself. Years ago, I was um, speaking in a meeting down in Tampa, Florida. And uh, the pastor called me up about two weeks ahead of time. And he was telling me where I was going to stay. And I said, well, you know, just to be honest, I like staying at people's homes. Long pause on the other end. He said, preacher, we've never had anyone come and speak for us that that stayed in somebody's home. We got a nice hotel for you. I said, well, I'll stay at the hotel if that's where you want me. But just to be honest, I like staying in people's homes. He said, you really mean that? I said, yeah. He said, we'll work that out. That'll be great. So <laughs> he couldn't get anyone that would take me. And, uh, and so the music director, he said, hey, will you take Brother Shetler for the week? And the music director said, yeah, that'll be fine. I'll take him. So he picked me up. The music director picked me up at, uh, at the airport, the Tampa airport. And, and, he, and he was the first one that told me, he says, hey, I'm sorry, you're going to be staying with me. Nobody in the church volunteered to take you. And I said, okay, well, whatever, you know. I would have stayed in a hotel. I don't care, whatever. He said, no, no, we're looking forward to you. My wife and I and our kids, we're looking forward to you staying. So we got there late at night. And then in the morning, I got up early to have my devotions. And I went outside and, whoa, was it foggy that morning. I mean, and th- I, no exaggeration, no sensationalism. You could not see from here to the clock. I mean, it was just fog. And I'm on the porch, and I'm, I'm having my devotions. It's probably 6 o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's pea soup. I mean, it is just total fog. And I, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm reading, and I'm having my devotions. And So I don't even know where we are because it was the night when we came in, and I was talking to the, youth, the, the music director. So I, I don't know. I'm in some neighborhood, I think. But anyway, so I'm sitting on the front porch, and I'm reading. And as I'm reading, I hear something. And I can't figure out what it is. I can't see a thing. And I go like, now what is out there? And I get up to the edge of the thing and I can kind of see a street. But I can't see beyond the street. But I'm hearing noises. And they're just not like normal noises. It sounds a little mechanical, but I, but I can't tell. And then it sounds like footsteps. And, and I go, is it maybe, like I thought to myself, is it a cow pasture over there? Is there cows over there? And, 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 and I'm, I'm trying to listen, and then I kind of hear a swish. And I go, what in the world is that? And then finally, I hear, oh, I go, oh, I just heard something. And I went, whoa, what was that? I put my Bible down, and I come to the edge of the porch, and I'm listening. And as I'm listening, I hear this, this noise again. And then I hear these steps. And then I hear, yeah, I think it's up on the green. Good shot. <laughs> I think that's a golf course. Hey, I'm going to chip it up there. Yeah, it, mine's up there too. I'm going, there's guys over there in pea soup playing golf. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe this. It's 6.15 in the morning, and there's guys over there playing golf in the fog. I mean, how can I just see their ball? How can they find their ball? I go in. I said to the music director, hey, did you know that there's a golf course across the street? He said, yeah, we know there's a golf course across the street. I said, there's guys out there playing golf. And he starts laughing. He said, oh, 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 Jim, you can set your clock to them. I said, what are you talking about? He says they're all retired guys from Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. And they, they're all a bunch of retired guys. They play at the same time. He says they come foursomes all day long. They got a certain time. They've got to start their play. It doesn't matter if it's raining. doesn't matter if it's foggy. doesn't matter what's going on. You'll see them out there. You can set your clock by them. And they're there, and it's the same group of four, and then there'll be another group of four, and another group of four, and another group of four, and another group of four, group of four all day long. I said, no, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. 
I said, who are these guys? Oh, well, they're all in their 70s. They probably worked in factories, and now they're retired. And they said, hey, I'm going to retire to California, or to Florida. I'm going to retire to Florida and play golf the rest of my life. I said, that's crazy. Now listen to me. As long as I live, I don't ever want to forget this. I went back to my room to change for the day. And I said, oh, God. When I'm in my 70s, I do not want to be hitting a little round ball around in the fog. I want to live for something better than golf. They spent their whole life, every day of their life, for 40, 50 years in a factory to move to Florida to play golf at 6.15 in the morning. And I said, oh, come on. There is more to life than hitting a white ball around in the fog. And I want to tell you something. God has called all of you for more. And you're not going to understand that by watching TV and being on social media. But can I tell you something? God's got something more for you. And something greater for you. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Guys, I'm 65. I don't know how much time I got. But I got to tell you, and I don't, I'm not against golf. Guys, do you ever play golf, Brother Sean? Yes. But I sure don't play it at 6.15 in the morning in the fog. I said, that's stupid. But that's all they got to live for. Now, you hear me, because I don't know who you are in here today. If you're in here, and you do not understand what it is to have a relationship with God, because when Christ comes into your life, he gives you a higher purpose. He gives you, you're living now. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. Man, our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Man, I got a home in heaven. I'm a pilgrim, man. I'm a stranger here. There is a greater purpose for Jim Shetler's life than I just spend my life in a factory and I do this and I do that and then I retire and I go down to Florida and I just enjoy my little grandkids and that's all my life. No, it's not. You have an eternal life. You have an eternal being. And if you've never received Christ, come today to know this one that gives life. And friend, if you are saved, stop living for the temporal and start living for the eternal. Do you know what a mature mind does? A mature mind says, you know what? I have not arrived. I'm being honest. I'm being humble. And I'm being hopeful. God's not done with me yet. I have not arrived, and there are areas of my life that still need to change. Number two, I will not look back. I've had things happen in my life. I've had people do things, and I have failed my God, but I'm going to press toward the mark. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to forget those things which are behind, and I'm tired of living in the past, and I'm going to go forward. And then i got to tell you, I should not aim low. I believe God's got something great for me. You say, Brother Shetland, how long have you been in ministry? 43 years. You're kind of winding it up now, aren't you? Kind of ending it all. No. I believe these are the greatest days of my life. I believe that, I've, God, I believe that these have been the greatest days of my life. No, I don't know if today's the last day I spent on this earth. I want to spend it all I got at Central Baptist Church. Because I believe there's a higher call. And that higher call is my walk with God and the way that God can still use me. Let me tell you something, Central Baptist. It's not over, man. It's just beginning. Have you seen our country, Brother Shetler? All that tells me is you better get a higher call because this country does not have what you need. And there's no way that this government is going to provide what we really are lacking. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Central Baptist, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've been saved. If you've been saved for one month or you've been saved for 40 years, are you going to start having a mature mind? March 26, 2023, Central Baptist Church, I sat down at that altar, God, I have not arrived. I think I've been comparing myself to other people in this church, and I think, hey, I'm pretty good. But today... God, you got a hold of my heart, and I got honest, and I took my mask off. I took the costume off today, March 26, 2023. And today, I said, dear God, I got honest, and I am not where I need to be, and I humble myself. And God, 
I'm hopeful. I believe you're going to still help me. I've struggled with anger. I've struggled with this. I've struggled with impatience. I've struggled with this all my life. But God, I'm admitting I haven't arrived, and I believe that you're not done with me yet. And I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. Some of you need to come down this altar and say, I will not look back. No, 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 no. Today, I leave it at this altar, and I'm forgetting the things of the past. It's time for me to move forward. I've had things happen in my life, Brother Shetler, but I'm not going to live in the past any longer. I'm going forward for the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, every one of you, I pray, I should not aim low. God, you have a plan. You have a purpose for me. And it is not the things of this world. Today, I determine at 62. Today, I determine at 48. Today, I determine at 21 that I'm going to live for a higher call. God, you've got something greater for me than what this world has to offer. If that's true, I encourage you to step forward, come down to the altar, grab pastor's hand, say, Pastor, I want to go to the higher call. I believe God's got more for me than what I, and I have, I've been living in this world long enough. I got I to gotta be in the world, but I don't have to be of the world. And today, I'm deciding I need to mature in my mind, in my thinking. I'm telling you, if you're here today, and you do not know Christ as your Savior, and all you've got is retirement and a golf game to live for, there is something greater to live for than that. And if you've never received Christ, I want to encourage you today to come into a personal relationship with a God who will take you to places and take you to heaven. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm going to have you stand at your feet, if you would, if everyone would just stand to their feet. I want to ask you a couple questions. How many people here at Central Baptist today would say, honestly, honestly, and humbly, Jim, I have not arrived in my spiritual journey, and I am not satisfied with where I'm at. I have not apprehended, but I'm going to press toward the mark. I have not arrived, and I'm getting honest today. I'm tired of comparing my life to other people in this church. Because I can always look good. I can always find somebody that's struggling with things worse than me. But Jim, if I'm taking the mask off today, and I'm getting honest, I have not arrived, and I need to humble myself and ask God to help me in an area that I have never matured in. I have never grown in this area of my life. And today, I want to tell God, I have not arrived. If that's true, would you raise your hand right now? How many would say that? Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your tenderness. How many would be willing to say today, I will not look back. I got stuff in my past, Jim, that I've failed. I've got stuff in my past. People have hurt me, done me wrong. But you know what? Today, I'm going to mature. I'm going to grow up in my mind, and I'm going to move on. I'm, I, 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 I'm leaving the court case right here at Central Baptist. I'm no longer the judge. God, you do whatever you want, but I'm moving on. And I'm forgetting those things which are be behind. And I will not look back. How many would say with an upraised hand, Jim, I'm making a decision today. I will not look back. Would you raise your hand? Amen. Praise God. Okay. Here goes, church. Central Baptist, I should not aim low. God, you got something for me. You got a plan. You got a purpose. And I'm not going to make this world be the end of my goals financially, emotionally, relationally. God, I want to press towards a prize. I'm in my 60s. God, I'm in my 70s in this church. And God, I've been living for the temporal. Today, I want to start living for the eternal. I'm in my 20s. Dear God, there's so many things that the world's attractive, but you know what? I want a higher call. I was made for more than what this world says I'm made for. And today, I'm pressing forward to a higher call. Jim, would you pray for me? If that's true, would you raise your hand? All over the auditorium. Man, that's good. So here goes. I'm going to lead us in prayer. And when I say amen, that piano will start playing. I encourage you to come forward. Kneel down and make the decision and make the statement. I have not arrived, God. I will not look back, Lord. I should not aim, Lord Jesus. I'm going for high. 
And God, you spoke to my heart today. Father, I thank you for the tenderness in this room. And if there's somebody that is not saved, may they come down and grab Pastor Charles' hand and say, hey, I need Jesus Christ. I need to get saved today. Father, if there's someone that needs to make a decision today, may this altar be alive with people, with men and women, young and old at this church, that's ready to mature and stop being a baby and grow up and mature in their life And God, whatever step it is that they need to take, give them the grace, give them the courage, and give them the desire. I'm getting it taken care of today. I am ready to mature in my thinking and in my mind. God be with them. I pray this in Jesus' name for Jesus' sake. As the piano plays, you come. You come right now. God spoke to your heart. You come.
right, you can look up this way. Amen. Noah Anderson been a tr visiting for a number of, uh, for a long, good while, two years, yeah. Uh -huh. And God's laid on her heart to, she's been saved, she's been strictly baptized, and she wants to present herself for membership Amen. here at Central Baptist Amen. Church. Amen. 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 We love Ms. Nola. She's a sweet Christian lady. Serve Amen. the Lord and looking forward to what God's going to do through her here. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to do that. Brother Rick, we have a second. Jerry, uh, okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? See me. Amen. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ms. Nola. What we're going to do, all right, got several things we've got going. Right afterwards, I want everybody to come by and give her the right hand of Amen. fellowship. Welcome her into Central Baptist Church, right? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Nola. I'm going to have you just sit there just a second, and we'll bring her back up in just a minute. I need you to have a seat. We got a special offering for our preacher today. Hadn't it been blessed? Have you been blessed today? <laughs> I hesitate saying that word blessed. Because in the morning Sunday school, Brother Jim was uh, encouraging us not to use the word bless in our prayer life. You know, I, Lord bless this person. Lord bless this missionary. He said the Bible teaches that we're to pray specifically for people. He went over how to do that, and that was tremendous Sunday school, too. And so. And then, this, then uh, somebody told me as the choir got up to sing, what was the name of the song that we sang today? Blessed. I'm blessed. <laughs> but that's all right. We are blessed by the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, we want to thank you you came today, Brother Jim. Thank you for being here with us. And what we're going to do, we need guys to come on down. We'll do an offering for our preacher and his wife. And then what we're going to do after that, uh, we are going to ask Eric, and Lauren and Elena, come up here with me, okay? And then, Ms. Nola, don't go too far because we're going to have you come up. We're going to do the right hand of a fellowship. Outside these front doors, we have 100 Krispy Kreme donuts. Everybody gets one, okay? And I think Daniel just told me, told me he counted 100 people already. So, all right, so as we go out, we're just going to do as a fellowship for Eric and Lauren and Elena. They're leaving us. They've been with us how many years? Four years. They're heading down to South Carolina, and we're going to greatly miss them. And uh, we'll have that in just a few minutes. Guys, who's praying? I'm praying. Okay, good. <laughs> Lord bless. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> that's two of us. Brother Jimmy did it earlier. I'm doing it to you. Uh, Father, we are so blessed by you in so many wonderful ways. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. And we thank you. We thank you for this dear brother and his dear wife and the ministry you've given them. And the, Lord, the things we've learned today, not to be hazy in our prayer requests or lazy or crazy, but Lord, to ask specifically and to keep on asking. And then, Lord, this morning's message that, Lord, we know we have not arrived. Lord, we are looking forward and stretching ourselves towards that prize of the mark of the high calling of in Christ Jesus. Help us, O oh God, we pray, in those areas. Thank you, Lord, for this offering today, and I pray today that it will meet the need of our preacher and his wife. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. Eric and, and Lauren and Lena, come on up here with me. All right, this morning, uh, I'm going to ask Eric and Lauren and Lena, they're going to step out to the front as you go out today and grab you a donut. I think there's some water and stuff, juice or something out there. And just take a few minutes underneath the carport and tell them how much you love them. Amen. Tell them how much you're going to miss them. Now, the Bible teaches if we tell somebody we love them, we've got to show some action, right? God so loved that he gave, right? Okay, so Thursday, they need some help. They've got some packing and things to be done and put onto the truck and so forth. If you can help with that, see Eric or Lauren, 
and they'll give you details. They'll live just right down the street here, so it's not far from the church. And on Friday, they'll be heading to South Carolina. Man, we're going to greatly miss you guys. We love you guys. So we're still wondering if it's the will of God for you to move. <laughs> you see, I took note of what he said. I'm praying specifically. <laughs> so, okay. Well, we're going to have prayer over them, and then they're going to head back. And then Ms. Nola, I'm going to ask her to come up here, and we're going to give Ms. Nola the right hand of fellowship. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Father, thank you for Eric and Lauren and for Elena today. And we do ask you, Lord, for, uh, that you would use them in the next place you've taken them to. God, I pray that your name would be glorified even more so in their lives. And that for Elena, that, Lord, she'll come to know you as Savior early on. Lord, be with Eric and Lauren as they train her. And, Lord, I pray that you'll guide Eric in the job and the right place to be. And, Lord, that you're, again, that the gospel may go forward through their lives as they touch the lives of many others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys going out? Hold on. Hold on. Let them go and head on out. And then we're going to shake their hands and fellowship with them a little bit out there. Ms. Nola, come on up here with me. We thank God for Ms. Nola and her love for the Lord. All right, come on. Goodbye. Give her a right hand of fellowship, okay? <laughs>